Hello and welcome back to the video series about linear algebra. Now, we have already reached part 43 and with this part we will start with a new topic. Indeed, today we will start talking about so-called determinants. They occur a lot when you deal with linear algebra, so you see it's a very important topic. However, you already know, before we go into the details, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. There's no doubt, I'm only able to make such free maths videos because you support me. Therefore, as a big thank you, you find PDF versions and quizzes for all the videos in the description. Okay, then without further ado, let's start discussing the determinant of a matrix A. The first thing I can already tell you is that the determinant is only defined for square matrices. Hence, this concept here only makes sense if the number of columns is equal to the number of rows of the matrix. On the other hand, we will find out that for each square matrix we can define the determinant. More precisely, the object we will define as the determinant of A exists. Moreover, it will just be a real number. Indeed, this number will have some very special properties I can already tell you here. The first one we can visualize geometrically. In order to see this, we have to use the column picture for the matrix A. This means that we will consider the n columns of the matrix as vectors in Rn. In fact, we know that the columns span a so-called parallel e pipet. So you should know this is just a generalization of the two-dimensional parallelogram. Therefore, the easiest thing to visualize such a parallel e pipet would be to use three dimensions. This means we have exactly three vectors in the three-dimensional space. So for example, this one could be a1, this here is a2 and there we have a3. And now the idea is that we can just translate all these vectors to the end of the arrows. And then what we get is a well-defined three-dimensional figure. And this is what we call the parallel e pipet. Now, maybe it's not easy to visualize, but it should not be hard to define the similar figure in higher dimensions. So it's the same idea and also in n dimensions we would call it a parallel e pipet. However, if we first keep it in three dimensions, we know that this figure has a well-defined volume. And then this volume should be given by the determinant of the matrix A. More precisely, it should be the absolute value of this real number. Indeed, this is a property the determinant of a matrix should fulfill for all matrices. Moreover, it should also hold in lower and higher dimensions, which means we would generalize the notion volume. For example, in two dimensions it should represent the area. However, with this generalization we have the property for all matrices. Ok, having this in mind, we can immediately explain the second property. This is something we want to use in the case that we know that the determinant is equal to zero. In other words, the volume the vector span here vanishes. Hence, we can immediately draw a very important conclusion. Namely, if the determinant is zero, the column vectors here are linearly dependent. Because otherwise, they would definitely span a non-vanishing volume. Therefore, we also see this is exactly if and only if. However, now we also see that linearly dependent vectors in the columns of A means that the matrix A is not invertible. Therefore, the determinant gives us the correct explanation if a matrix is invertible. In summary, this means if you can calculate the determinant of the matrix A, you merely get the information if the matrix is invertible or not. So you see, this is all quite nice, but you also recognize there is one information in the determinant we didn't talk about yet. Namely, we completely ignored the sign of the determinant. And this is the third property here, 
the sign plus or minus of the determinant gives us an orientation. Now of course, there we have the question, what does it mean? What is an orientation of the corresponding vectors in the matrix? Indeed, it's not so complicated, it's something we already know as the right hand rule in three dimensions. So the sign tells us in which orientation the three vectors lie in the space. And now you can generalize that for n dimensions. More precisely, it means if we put the unit matrix 1n into the determinant, we get out a volume of 1, but it should be plus 1. So the canonical unit vectors in the normal order should get us to the plus sign. In other words, this should be the positive orientation of vectors in Rn. Moreover, this also means if we exchange 2 in this order, we should get to minus 1. But don't worry, we will talk about all these properties in more detail in the next videos. Moreover, there we will see, if we want these properties, we don't have much choice for the definition of the determinant. However, in order to get a better visualization, we will start talking about the determinant in two dimensions. Afterwards, we can generalize that and then we can also talk about a lot of calculation rules. For example, we will talk about a so-called Leibniz formula and a so-called Laplace formula. In addition, we will also see that we can use our Gaussian elimination to calculate determinants. Therefore, I really hope that I see you in the next videos and have a nice day. Bye.